Hello everyone, I'm Megan Sullivan, and welcome to my review of the Grand Blue Fantasy Relink demo. This game is developed and published by Psy Games and is being reviewed on the PlayStation 5. If you enjoy this type of content, please give this video a like and this channel a follow, and I'll keep bringing you all the awesome video game reviews and news you need to know about. Thank you. All right. Let's get started. So this is actually my first Grand Blue experience, and I have to say, it wasn't bad at all. In fact, there are some real highlights I'm excited to share with you, but I do have one major issue that makes me a little hesitant to just go out and buy the game full price. What is it? Well, let's talk about that. So usually I start my reviews talking about the story, because I mostly play RPGs for the story and characters. Unfortunately, the available story mode in the Grand Blue Fantasy Relink demo is only like 20 to 30 minutes max, and all my characters did was visit an island where locals were being terrorized by monsters and then plowed through said monsters, which included goblin mobs and a couple of oversized baddies. I didn't get any sense at all of who I am and what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Worse, I have a ton of characters that I can play as, which is awesome, but there's no proper introduction to any of them. Who is Gron? Who is Roland? Who are any of these people? I wish story mode had been longer and had some kind of hook that made me want to learn more. Like some cliffhanger that can only be resolved by experiencing the full game. But alas, there is no cliffhanger, which is sad. The good news is that's my only real complaint about the demo. If you love combat and managing a team, you'll really enjoy your time with Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. I definitely did. Now, I don't know why I assume this game would be turn-based, but it's not. The combat is in real time and involves four party members, each with different weapons, skills, and combat styles, working together to take down enemies, whether it's a large mob or one singular colossus. And it's a super fun experience. I agree with online pundits who describe Grand Blue's combat mechanics as a mix of combat systems from other RPGs. For example, it features the kind of chain attacks, in this case Link attacks and overdrives, in this case chambers, you can find in something like, I don't know, Tales of Arise, with a fast and furious action and particle effects of Final Fantasy 16. And in fact, I super appreciate that Grand Blue has the same intuitive button mapping as Final Fantasy 16, where items and potions are tethered to the D-pad and skills and attacks are assigned to the shoulder and face buttons. I also like the quick and smooth transitions from one skill set to another. You can easily change together basic attacks, charged attacks, special abilities, plus dodge and roll, and this keeps the action moving forward, which keeps battle exciting. Also, a very biddable camera means you can run and gun while trying to look in every direction at once. By the way, I didn't use the assist mode because I wanted to see how balanced the combat is, and although it's pretty challenging at times, it's also pretty balanced, I do appreciate that the assist mode is there because the battlefield is pretty chaotic with a lot of enemies and allies running everywhere at once, and sometimes this can be a tiny bit of a problem. Even with an extremely biddable camera that allows you to spin it around rapidly so you can see what's happening nearby, it's easy for enemies to get in a cheap shot when you're distracted by a multitude of enemies in front of you. If there's some sort of visual or audio cue that warns players of an incoming attack, I missed it somehow, and part of that might be because of all the visual noise. The particle effects are very pretty, but they sometimes block the action, so I can't see what the heck is going on. But luckily, they don't block the very easy to read, easy to understand UI, which tells me exactly which button does what and the victory conditions for each battle. Huzzah, I like that. What I like even more is the very impressive impressive roster of characters you can control, each with a totally different look and feel. Now in the demo story mode, you can only control the main character Gron, who's sort of a jack of all trades type with a mix of sword attacks, heal spells, and defensive maneuvers. And by the way, you can play as a female main character in the full game, but for whatever reason, that's not in the demo, which is kind of lame. However, in quest mode, which is where you can test your skills against different types of enemies, you do have the ability to change your party leader and swap Gron for one of 10 other characters who have their own unique skill set. I had a blast tinkering with different party compositions and experimenting with different abilities. Did I have any favorites? Well, I especially liked the sass and speed of Yudara and Io's powerful mix of offensive and defensive magic. Although I love the visual style and feel of Narmaya as well. 
Ooh, by the way, you can play online co-op with friends or strangers if you want a more connected experience. And I'm happy to report I got online quite easily. Unfortunately, I'm a big coward and I don't like playing with strangers. And since none of my friends were playing the demo at the same time that I was, I chickened out of the co-op experience. Although somebody did reassure me it is actually very fun and I have no reason to doubt that. Speaking of which, the fun continues off the battlefield as well, at least for me. I mean, some people might find having to constantly manage their team's skills, gear, and inventory to be a bit of a buzzkill, but I enjoyed it. I especially liked going through each unit's inventory and swapping in and out stat boosters known as sigils to see how they affected a character's chances of survival out in the field. I think I would have also appreciated hitting up the blacksmith for weapon upgrades and the item shop just to see what's available, but alas, those are not available in the demo. I should also add that there's not a lot of exploration available in the demo, but I don't know how much that affects the overall Grand Blue experience. All in all, I enjoyed this tiny slice of the game. Between the brief tutorial mode, the story mode, and the quest mode, it's only an hour or two long at most, but its fun and furious combat had me sticking around way longer than I would normally play a demo, so that's a really good sign. Will I pre-order the game or buy it day one? And I'm gonna have to see what the overall reviews look like before deciding. I'm big on story and characters and just didn't get a feel for those things at all. So I think I'm gonna wait, but so far, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is definitely promising. What did you think of the demo? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks so much for watching guys. See you later. Astral Realm is Lilith's home. One way back is to restore the Forbidden Primal. She will utilize the power of the Four Primals and attempt to cast open the gates once more. You can tell Primal Beasts were weapons created by Astrals. Their powers are capable of untold destruction. Primal Beast? Is that what you call Primeval Gods? I sense something. I can't put a finger on what. That doesn't look right from up here. Oh, no. Feels like overkill for a glorified treasure. Something's blocking me. I can't get through. Oh, primeval god, I beg your forgiveness. But fate set in motion can't be stopped. Deliver us from grief and sacrifice. Fulfill my salvation! The Hobbit! We've been through a lot together. Visited new islands, met new people. But you've always been there to protect me. I just wanted to say thank you.